Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about specular lighting. So we've already covered ambient, we've covered diffuse, now it's time to cover specular. Uh, basically the idea of specular lighting is um, it's the shiny aspects of the material that a light is reflecting off of. So the light's going to reflect off that material and bounce into your eyes. Uh, if you look around your room right now, look at some shiny objects, you'll probably see the reflection of light off of some surface. Now that's going to be specular lighting. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how the hell specular lighting works. Then we're going to dive in to exactly what the shininess, how to control that shininess and what that actually means. And then we're going to do some code. So follow along. Uh, if you like this episode, hit thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like it, hit thumbs down and, uh, you know, subscribe and, uh, do all that stuff. Yeah, let's do it. So I thought I'd give you an example of specular reflection, uh, looking at this image of this Corvette, pretty cool looking Corvette, but it has specular reflections all over it. Uh, any place that you see that white shine is basically specular reflection and based on the material that the light's reflecting off of into your eyeball, and that's important, it's into your eye, the view position. Um, it's going to reflect differently. Uh, some parts of the materials are direct reflections, so you can basically see exactly what light source is reflecting off it. And uh, other places on the material, like the hood, it diffuses out a little differently. So it doesn't reflect exactly what that light would look like. Uh, it kind of spreads out a little more over the surface. And then the window is an exact reflection of that light and uh, the basically a reflection of all the things around it as well including the foliage behind it you'll see the tire has direct reflection as well and so those are all different shininess values on all areas of this car i thought this was a good example so let's dive into the formula and talk a little bit about that so here is what we currently have with our diffuse function we have ambient plus diffuse we have these fong identifiers these vectors and these values and uh in this episode we're going to add specular onto this formula so what does that mean? Well, uh, for the Fong identifiers, we're going to need two values. We're going to need the specular value and the shininess value, or the alpha. That's that little alpha Greek character. And then the two vectors that we're going to be talking about is the R and the V. And uh, that's going to be V being the two camera vector and R being the reflected light vector. And so let's cover those a little bit. But first, I want to talk about where we currently stand. Right now, with diffuse, we have L dot N. Okay, so these two vectors L and N to light in their normal vector watch the last episode if you haven't seen it um, and then all we do is we take the dot product of those two values and that returns our diffuse that's how we get our diffuse I mean there's a couple other little calculations but for the most part that's how we get our diffuse now with specular we, we're gonna use these vectors okay so for the specular calculation we're gonna need these two vectors let's start with R R is going to be the reflection vector the reflection vector of what you may ask well, it's going to be the reflection vector of the light to the normal, okay? So we're going to reflect the light, the incident ray, so the directional light uh, ray coming from the light to the normal, and that's going to be pretty easy to calculate. We'll just take the inverse of the two light vectors, so negative two light vector, and we're going to reflect that over the normal, okay? That's going to look a little something like that. Um, and that's going to give us our reflected ray. So all we need to do is take the inverse of the two light vector and reflect that over the normal. And we're going to get the exact light like reflection off of that normal. And that's important because say your eyeball was right here. We want to see what light is being reflected off of the material. Now, if you stare at this bright spot too long, your eye may eventually end up looking like Sauron, the eye of Sauron, and then burn to a crisp. So let's not do that. Let's move this eyeball um, where that reflection is going to be just a little bit more different. Um, and so what this eyeball represents is going to be this vector. So that's going to be the V hat vector or the two camera vector. Okay, so this eyeball is basically the camera's position. Uh, we calculate that by just taking world position and subtracting that from camera position. Remember, we talked about vector subtraction. And so we can figure out this two camera vector. And now that we have this two camera vector, we can take the dot product of the reflected vector and the two camera vector. And that's going to give us the shininess at that little spot. And there's other math that kind of goes into this. I'm not going to cover it right now. But this is going to be how we calculate that specular value. But there's one last thing, and that's going to be the shininess, okay? And that's going to be represented by alpha. 
So shininess is, as you can see right now, the shine kind of spreads across the whole thing. This is like the matte part of that Corvette. It's very matte paint finish. Now, as we increase the shininess, that matte finish now becomes more and more, I, I like saying wet. It looks more wet or more plasticky. And so the small, that little brightness area, that little circle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And there's a really good reason for that. Um, if we take the power of our like R dot V to a shininess factor, that's going to change. And I want to talk a little bit about why that is. So I've got Desmos graphing calculator right here. And I've got two little formula over here on the left side, alpha equals zero. So our shininess currently at the moment is zero. We have no shine. Um, and then the formula underneath is our, if we do X inputs, so along the X axis, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, as we increase that value, and then we take that to the power of alpha, we're going to get a value. So right now, currently, alpha is 0. And if we take any value, 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and we do that to the power of 0, that's going to be 1. So if you do 0 right now for this shininess, it's just always going to be 1. It's going to be really bright, and it's not going to look... Right. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to increase that at least to 1. And so now that it's at 1, you'll see that as our X increases and our input for our shininess stays at 1, it's a linear line. So the shininess is now linear, which doesn't make sense because the shininess factor <laughs> isn't really linear, right? So we're going to need to just do a little bit more increase, and now we have a quadratic function. Okay, so this is where we start seeing our light fall off. That 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 little circle get a uh, the little brightness circle. The, you know what I'm saying? The specular circle gets smaller. And so as x increases, so as the sh as that r dot v increases, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, you'll see it falls to the top. And so actually, it grows, rises. Um. So I didn't actually state this, but zero represents black. Let's say zero on the y-axis is black and one is white. You see, we're trying to figure out why here. So zero is black and y is one. Right here, we have all white, all shine. And down here, we have just blackness or our ambient color. And so as we increase that, uh, let's say let's jump this thing up to five. You'll see now, as we increase our x, it stays zero longer which means that circle, stay, uh, that little shininess circle goes from black, 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 black. Now it's white. You see, now it increases to one. And if we increase that shininess even more, you'll see it stays black long, longer across the surface of the object. And then at the very end, right there, that's where it becomes white. It just shoots right up and becomes a smaller circle. See that? If we increase it all the way to 128, you'll see that becomes really small white circle and it becomes way more shiny. It's just a specular shine right off that object. So that's kind of how the shininess function works. So let's dive into the code. Okay, so uh, here's the code. If you need this code, you can go over to the GitHub repository. I have it all over there. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. Go grab it, pull it down, code along with me, use the code. I don't care. It's there. Um, but where we're going to start in our engine is going to be under graphics, shaders, shared.metal because we need to update the types of stuff we're sending in. First thing we're going to update is going to be our scene constants. So scene constants uh, contain should contain our float 3 i position or how about camera position interchangeable, right? We're going to call it camera. You can call it i if you want. It's going to be you know the position at which your eye is viewing the scene. Uh, the next thing we need to do is just like with ambient and diffuse, we need to update our material. So float three here, and that's going to be the specular material component. Uh, there's one more thing we need to add that's a little different from the ambient and the diffuse, and that's going to be that shininess factor that we were talking about. So that's going to be a float shininess. So shininess. Hope that's how you spell shininess. And then for light data, we we need our light to be able to control that specular intensity. So let's create a specular intensity variable under light data. And that's all fine and well, right on, looks good. Um, we need a way to pass our camera's to light vector down through um, to the fragment shader. So up in the rasterizer data, I'm gonna create a little float three here and that's going to be the two camera vector. So we're gonna compute the two camera vector up in the vertex, or vertex shader and then we're gonna pass that down through the rasterized 
rasterizer data into the fragment shader. So those are all the variables we need. Um, before I go and implement this code in the shaders, I just want to go and add the same exact values over in the CPU side. This is the GPU side. We want to go to the CPU side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click inside the file and I'm going to go open assistant editor. Okay, and that's going to open up the file on the right hand side. And now I can go over to my types, metal types, and we can start adding the same value. So uh, rasterizer data doesn't exist on the CPU, so I'm not going to go to there. Um, I'm going to scroll up to scene constants. Scene constants, I put it at the bottom, so I need to put it at the exact same spot. So var camera position equals uh, float 3. And I'm just going to put that at the origin 0, 0, 0. And yeah, so now we have scene constants, camera position. Needs to match, but need in the same exact position. Uh, for material, we have specular and shininess. So I'm going to go var specular. That's going to be a float 3. You don't really need to add this part, these, this float 3, but I do anyway. So float 3. And I'm just going to make the specular 111 to begin with. And then I'm going to create the shininess variable. That's going to be a float. And I'm going to set that equal to, let's do a higher shininess. So it's kind of shiny when it starts off. So now we have our specular and shiny. The last thing we need to add is var specular. Oops, specular intensity. It's going to be a float, and we're going to set it to, let's do 1.0. That's perfectly fine. So now we have all these values inside of our shader being sent, or our CPU being sent to the GPU. Um, the only thing we need to update really inside of our code is going to be this camera position. We need to update every single frame the scene constant's camera position. So let's go into our scene real quick. Game shiz scene. Sand, uh, scene, just the plain old scene, and scroll down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this. Now we don't need this. Um, scroll down to update scene constants, and at the very bottom down here, I'm just gonna go scene constants dot camera position equals camera manager dot current camera dot get position. So that's gonna get the position in world space of our camera. So um, every single frame. So now we're sending along the camera position into our GPU vertex shader. So let's go back. Let's get rid of this core. Get rid of this game shiz. Go back into our shaders and jump into basic shaders and start implementing those. So first thing we're going to need to do is calculate that two camera vector. We're calculating that two camera vector, the V hat, uh, in in here in the basic vertex shader. So I'm just going to go rd dot two camera vector. We already added that variable on the rasterizer data. Uh, and I'm going to set that equal to, um, well, this is easy. Remember, we were talking about the vector subtraction. Uh, we start with the head. What's the head? The head is going to be the to the camera. So the eye position or the camera position is going to be the head. And then we're going to subtract the tail, which is the world position. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, scene constants dot camera position. And I'm going to subtract already or well let's just do world position dot xyz right there so now i'm creating the two camera vector by subtracting world position from camera position and that gives us our two camera vector pretty gnarly now we're done with the vertex shader that's all we really needed to do in the vertex shader now down in the fragment shader so go down to the basic fragment shader go down to where we're actually lighting that thingy and uh, let's start adding a couple more things. So we're gonna need float three specular, oh, total specular. And that's gonna be equal float three. You just wanna set that to zero, zero, zero to begin with. And then at the very end, we need to, in, we need to add total specular to our calculation. So let's just delete that and add total specular right there. We have an actual, right now we're just adding zero. We're not actually adding anything. That happens in the for loop. So right here, inside this for loop, we're gonna do our specular lighting. Let's do the basic stuff, just kind of start it off. Uh, we need a float three. This will be the specularness. And just like the diffuse lighting, we have diffuseness. Let's do specularness equals material dot specular uh, times light data dot specular intensity oh. and that gives us our specularness um, the two vectors we need we need the r hat and the v hat okay so the r hat's the reflected light vector let's create that um, at the very top under unit normal 
I'm just gonna go float three. This is gonna be the unit reflected vector. No, not the unit reflected vector. <laughs> we need the, instead of doing the reflected, we'll do that a little bit in just a second. But the first thing we're gonna do is the V and that's gonna be the unit two camera vector. Cause we do need to normalize our two camera vector. So normalize our RD dot two camera vector. Cause we wanna be working in unit space. Um, now that we have unit to camera vector, we can go down into the for loop and let's do it right underneath the unit to light vector. We're gonna go float three unit, uh, let's just call it the reflection vector equals normalize um, the reflection. So we can go reflect, remember it's just a function call reflect, we're gonna reflect this light. Uh, the negative unit to light vector over the unit normal. Just like we showed in that description. All we're doing is the negative unit to light vector over unit normal. And that gives us that, that, that reflection vector that we were talking about. Whew, okay. Now we have the reflection vector and we have the view vector. This is V, so this is gonna be our V vector. This is going to be our R vector, R vector. So now we can do R dot V. So underneath specular lighting, I'm just gonna create a float. I'm gonna call it R dot V, just like N dot L, but R dot V equals the dot product. Well, let's do max first. So it, the highest value it can return is 0, 0.0. And inside here, I'm going to do R dot V. So that's going to be the dot product of the unit reflection vector uh, over unit reflection vector, R dot V, <laughs> and the unit two camera vector. There it is. That's our R dot V. So we have our unit reflection vector dot unit two camera vector. Now let's do the shininess, right? So I'm just gonna call that, uh, let's call it the exponential, uh, let's call it specular exponential because we now need to take our R dot V and take it to the power of our shininess. So that's really easy. Uh, we can just go um, power of R dot V to material dot shininess. And that's gonna give us our final specular exponent value. It's gonna grow and shrink that shiny little dot. And we can just kind of complete it by creating our float three specular color equals clamp, just like we did above in the diffuse lighting. Um, that's gonna be specular -ness times n dot L. Well, we have specular exponent here times light data dot color times light data dot brightness. And then we gotta go 0, 0.0, that's the min, and the max is going to be one because we're gonna clamp it between there. Last thing we need to do is we just need to increase that total specular plus equals uh, specular color. And now we have our total specular being added up and we have a specular value. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press play and hope Nothing is broken. Let's just, just hope. Oh, look at the shininess. Okay, so uh, as you can see, the bottom still has that ambient color. There's that shiny, the shiny lights being shined over the material. And if I flip it upside down, you'll see they're doing the same exact thing. And if we were to increase that shininess factor, well, let's just, let's decrease it first because we're gonna go back. So let's go to metal types. Let's set that shininess factor to one so it's linear. Actually, let's set it to two because <laughs> you want it to be quadratic, right? So I'm going to set it to two to begin with, and then we'll increase that shininess. And you could really set it to one, so it kind of just maintains that nice linear uh, fall off or whatever. But yeah, that's going to give us this cool looking uh, spaceship. So let's go into the CPU and start adding some functions so we can modify our specular intensity and shininess and whatnot. So let's jump into game shiz, game objects. Let's start with the game object. So right now we have diffuse. Well, let's just copy this right here and add one for specular. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go specular right there. And instead of this, I'm gonna hold alt and I'm gonna drag over and then I'm just gonna put specular here. I'm also gonna put specular here copy that, paste it right there, right there, right there. I hope I'm not missing any. 
Boom and boom. I'm gonna build it. Just make sure that runs by calling, uh, hitting Command B. That does build, and I think that's gonna build just fine. We also need one more, and that's gonna be shininess. So that's just gonna need. Uh, so let's create the shininess, but that's not a float three. So we're just gonna write it out ourselves. So func set shininess, and that's going to be. Uh, we need the shininess value. Shininess should be a float and we can say self dot shininess oh, self dot material dot shininess equals uh, shininess we're gonna need a way to get so public func get shininess that's just gonna return a float value so we're gonna return self dot material dot shininess okay and we also want a way to s increase so um, we have set, yeah, that'll be fine. We don't need a way to increase. <laughs> All right, so now we have the ability to set that shininess. Next thing we need to do is go into light object and add one more for specular intensity. So go to light object, go down to the bottom, copy this line right here, and just paste it. Specular intensity. Uh, set light diffuse intensity. Now we wanna alt drag specular intensity. And right here, we just need specular intensity. Copy, paste that right there. Pretty sweet. Um, yep, so that builds. Uh, I'm going to now jump into scenes because now we have the ability to update that intensity. I'm going to go to sandbox scene, go down to the bottom. Hmm. So to increase and decrease, what I want to do is I am going to actually go into debug camera, comment out this self.zoom. We'll change this in just a second, but I'm going to comment out the self.zoom so we're not zooming in and out when uh, we zoom with the D wheel. And I'm going to go into sandbox scene and under do update, I'm going to go if mouse dot, or no, I'm going to say, uh, let's say cruiser dot set shininess material shininess oh is it just shininess oh that needs to be changed uh, to cruiser dot get shininess plus mouse dot get d wheel and that right there should give me um, to set the shine I'm gonna refactor this to be set material shininess so I want to be specific so set, we're gonna just do a rename, material shininess right there. And if I press play, it should start out at uh, two. And then as I increase, as I scroll, we should see that shininess increase and decrease. So right now it's just at two. And if I, I guess I have to scroll backwards. That's kind of obnoxious. Let me, let me go into this get D wheel. So I'm gonna right click, jump to definition. Uh, and then I'm just going to return the negative position, I guess, because, um, yeah, that's ridiculous. If I scroll up, it should increase. If I scroll back, it should decrease. Silly, silly game. Okay. So now if I increase the shininess, you see, it becomes shinier. See that? Let's do the back because it's easier to see. So if I decrease the shininess, oh, not negative. But uh, if I decrease the shininess to, let's say, right there, you can see, like, when it goes negative, things get funky. We can invert the color. Uh, and then if it's zero, which is probably, like, right there, <laughs> looks really weird. So we probably want to set it to at least two. Um, but as we increase that, it just gets smaller and smaller and shinier and more wet. Looks pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff. So if you like this episode, oh, oh, boy. If you like this episode, hit thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit thumbs down. And if you want to see more content like that, this, go ahead and subscribe. Post in the comments what you liked about this episode or what you didn't. Uh, and yeah, see you next time.